true or false? You need a modern computer to use modern plugins. Recently, I did a video looking at three VST recreations of rock organs. The link is somewhere up there. I was a bit surprised and shocked when I came to record it that running Cubase, three VST organs and my screen capture software brought my computer to its knees. Now my computer is not by any means underpowered, but it is a bit long in the tooth. When I bought it six years ago, it was the business. It had the best processor I could get and 16 meg of memory, which at the time seemed to be an awful lot. I know in 2021 standards it's not, but it was at the time. And it has really performed fantastically for me all that time. However, the latest generation of VST instruments are a challenge. Like a lot of people, I have problems with stray light and far light, the VST instruments that Native Instruments have released for contact, and the current generation of East-West Symphonic Instruments that have just been released with their Opus uh, edition simply wouldn't work. The base processor, the minimum spec processor for running those instruments is greater than the one in my computer. So what can we do? Well, VST instruments are fairly hungry for resources these days. So I thought we'd have a look at an example of that and then some of the ways that you could go about dealing with it. So the Hammond was the uh, culprit in the case. So at the moment I'm running a VST instrument in contact and as you can see the audio performance of my computer is just sitting there burbling quite nicely. Let's change that. So we'll load up the IK Multimedia Hammond. Now this is a beautiful sounding instrument, don't get me wrong. I think it's great. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. But you can instantly see in the bottom corner the dramatic impact it's having on the processing requirements of my computer. Just wait till it finishes loading anytime today. And there you can see the audio performance has taken a massive hit. In fact, to get it to work so I could make that video, I had to go in and set the buffer sizes to maximum and it played havoc with the latency on my system because normally I run with about 16 milliseconds of delay. I was up to 400 milliseconds and above. It was not good. But fortunately, it was for demo purposes. I don't normally run three VST instruments at the same time. So this is a bit of a beast. So what can we do to address that? Well, one of the things we can do in Cubase is to freeze. So having got my Hammond up and got it all set up, I can freeze the track. Now, freeze is only available for MIDI instruments and it's a whole track thing. You can't simply freeze one part on a track and not another. Your freeze options are to freeze the instrument only, to freeze the instrument and the channel, which actually means the pre-fader inserts. This doesn't alter the um, sends. You've still got the ability to adjust the panning and the fader on a frozen track and you can have post fader inserts what you can't have is the pre fader inserts they would also be rendered if you did freeze instrument and channels tail size reflects the difference between a midi track and an audio track if you say have um, a piano with a long decay the MIDI note might stop, but that decay will continue afterwards. And you have to specify in seconds how much of a tail you want to put 
on your instrument. So we'll dial it up to five seconds. That should be good enough. And here's the biggie. Unload instrument when frozen. So Cubase will freeze your instrument. It will create an audio track to replicate the MIDI performance and the MIDI instrument. And then you can unload it. So let's do this. I will edit out the bar because this does take a moment. So there you go. So this has now gone. The option to have it recorded just switched itself off. And this Hammond is now frozen. We can click on that MIDI part and nothing happens because it's got a lock on it to show that it's a frozen track. But if we go and have a look at the audio performance again, you can see down here in the corner, we're back to where we were before. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Now I'm going to unfreeze that and replace it with the contact instrument. Let's keep an eye on that. Keep freeze files. What does that mean? I'll show you in a minute. So the Hammond is back up and our audio performance is taking a hit once more. Although it doesn't seem to be quite as bad as before. But we will go into contact, discard those changes, and we'll just put the vintage organ back in. Doesn't really matter what one we use. There we go. Let's have a look at this piano track up here. It doesn't take as long to freeze. So if we freeze this, will we end up with three distinct parts? Let's find out. So what we'll do is we'll freeze the instrument only. Now, when it freezes it, it creates a freeze folder within your project folder, wherever that is in your file system, wherever you've put it, and it stores the audio files in there. That's what that keep freeze files uh, thing was about. So let's have a look at what it's created. So we'll import an audio file. Here it is in the freeze folder. We'll so there's our electric grand, but there's a problem. It's not what you would think. The reason being is that it has pushed together the parts with a little bit of separation between them and recorded one audio file. And then when it plays it back, it just plays the bit it needs. So, if we wanted the individual audio files, what do we do? I'll unfreeze that. Seems to have kept that, but we'll delete it. So if you want to just have that particular file rendered out, that part rather rendered out, what you would do is you go to edit, render in place, and render settings. Now, here you've got a number of options. You can render as one event a separate events. You can just have the settings from the source. You can have the channel settings, so any inserts you've got will copy across. The complete signal path, including any sends, and the complete signal path and any master effects. So anything you've got on the output channel. Um, you can have a tail put on it. I was talking before about MIDI. Well, again, you can add, if you've got effects, delay effects, you can do that. You can add in an allowance for that sound so it just doesn't cut off. And all the other settings as to where it's going to put it and what it's going to do with it. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to render in place these three. With the current settings. Now it instantly creates an audio file. And these are spaced out. So we actually have a single audio file that we could export. We could take copy somewhere else. And it's got the spacings and the timings correct. So this is independent of the freeze function. And as you can see, it has muted out the MIDI part on the channel above. Thing to note is if we come here, the fader position has also been rendered. Because if I undo that, and then I alter the fader position, highlight those, render in place, the file that it renders will be rendered at the lower fader level. Now, why is that important? As you can see, the audio file, the waveform isn't as high as the waveform was when we rendered it with the audio fader there. The reason that's important is you can, instead of rendering a part, you can render a range. Say, for example, you wanted to suddenly have a particular effect hit both of these at the same time. I've now highlighted those. I go to Edit, Render in Place, and Render with Current Settings. The audio file I've got has the piano at full volume, but the Hammond at a reduced volume. But you can actually see that gap that was in the middle isn't there anymore. This has rendered out the whole of that range as a single audio file. Effectively, I've highlighted and created a small part, which is a combination of two tracks. I could then mute out those if I wanted. It's actually muted them out, which I may or may not want, but I can easily unmute to put that back in. However, Render in place is also available on audio tracks. So if you have a part of a stem that you want to process quite dramatically, say for example, I want to do something utterly brutal to this particular guitar part, but I don't want to tamper with this, what I can do Snip that, do a render in place. Now, bearing in mind I've got the volume fader set down. That has now rendered that in place. It's also rendered it with the amplitude 5 settings that were on it. So I can then post-process that. So it gives me the ability to have a very different, say for example, I wanted to put a bit crusher on that to give it a, a vintage feel. How many records have you listened to where the opening half of a verse has been made to sound like a scratchy old record before suddenly all that effects is taken off and you're back into uh, normal business? This is one way of doing that kind of thing on a single track or on a combination of tracks because you can do this with audio and with MIDI. I hope that makes sense. So I'll just undo that, take those splits out as well. So freeze is there when you want to render a whole channel in one click and at the same time unload the MIDI instrument that's generating those sounds. Render in place is more flexible. You can render parts, 
you can render combinations of parts off different sounds. With either one of them, you can render with or without effects. But if, for example, you wanted to send the individual parts to somebody else, rather than rendering out the whole track as an export, render in place is a better option. If you want to effect part of a track and you don't want to have complicated routing where you're switching effects on and off, you can render purely that part of the track out. You could even do offline processing on it so that you've burnt in the effect without having to have that effect live during the mix down. Although they appear to do the same thing, they're actually quite different. And it's worth knowing that we've got both of them in our arsenal with Cubase so that we can make the best use of the instruments we've got without bringing our computers to their knees. I hope that's made sense and I hope you found it of value. I always forget to ask people to like and subscribe, even though I do have my little doobry that comes across the bottom of the screen. But if you have found this of value, please do like and subscribe. And as always, until next time, you take care of yourselves.